<laughs> here I am. Here I am with Jonathan Lipman. I've known Jonathan for many years now, and uh, he's one heck of a character. He has an encyclopedic knowledge of black and white movies for a start. Together, he's met so many famous people. Well, we'll get on to that. Oh, and he's a film extra as well. Uh, he should be a leading <laughs> man, but he's a film extra. So good morning, Jonathan. Good morning. Good Bonjour. morning. Thank you so much for uh, joining me on this chat. So first off, how did a New York boy end up in Nice? Have you got a well, bit of history for us? Yes, uh, th I was living in New York City for 17 years, and all I wanted to do was get out and come to Europe. And finally, after 17 years, I found a small job in Geneva. So I went from New York to Geneva in 1990. The job didn't work out, but I stayed. <laughs> I stayed for um, 20 years. My last job, I was the American consul uh, in the, for the United States in Geneva, hired locally. And then in 2010, I decided I would retire early and move to the sea. So I came to Nice 14 years ago in 2010. And you live and in yes. a super apartment overlooking the Bay des Anges. I will walk over and show it to you, if I may, just for oh, a of second. Of course you may. Here is my view of the sea. Behind me, voila. Wow. Wow. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, I'm very happy to be here. Now, what can I tell you about? <laughs> well, let's talk about black and white movies. Where did your interest begin in black and white movies? Okay, I was born in 1950, and in around 55 or 56, I started watching them on television. 1930s and 1940s black and white movies. Now, they weren't so old then. I mean, 1955, a movie made in 1940 was, okay, 15 years old, but it wasn't as old as it is would be today. And I fell in love with these black and white movies and all these actors and actresses who frequented these movies. And then, to my great surprise, when I went to the cinema in the early 60s, some of these people were still working, making movies, and some of them were still, you know, in their 40s. They had been in their 20s when I... Made, when they made these movies, and now they were in their 40s or 50s, and they were still working. And I was absolutely thrilled to see them on the big screen. And I've actually met a few of them over the years. Oh, go on. Tell us. Give us, well, give us a couple. <laughs> okay, the most amazing event that I ever had was I was in Ireland in 2011, and I met and had dinner with Maureen O'Hara, wow. the beautiful, headed Irish-American John Wayne, John Ford, actress whom I had first seen in Hunchback of Notre Dame uh, on television, which she made in 1939. And what was amazing was in 1960, she did the famous Walt Disney movie, The Parent Trap, where she played the mother of Haley Mills playing twins. And she was only about 40. And I saw her on the screen and, and didn't even realize until I got to the movie that she was in it. And I was absolutely enthralled. There was this beautiful redheaded woman, only 40, still beautiful and still working. And I met her in Ireland uh, with her two nephews. It's a long story, but I had dinner with her in Ireland, and she was ch charming. She was 90 years old at the time. 90 Another years old? 90 in 2011, and she died a few years later at 95. Another, another amazing adventure for me. Um, Maureen was one of my favorites, and so was Ingrid Bergman. And I'm walking down the street in London on... Um, St. Martin's Lane in the theater district, and I turned to my left, and who was walking next to me? Ingrid Bergman. I stopped oh. and smiled. She stopped and smiled. She was wearing a sling and a cane. She was very ill. We didn't know how ill, and unfortunately, she died a few months later, but we stood on the street corner and had a lovely conversation, and I told her that my all-time favorite movie, and this is true, is Alfred Hitchcock's Notorious with Ingrid Cary Grant and Claude Rains. It's my number one all-time favorite movie, and I told her, and she said that was a good one. <laughs> what made it so? Uh, what made it so special for you? It, it, it's just amazing, and I've become friends with many of these people's children. For example, Eleanor Parker, the beautiful actress who played the Baroness in The Sound of Music. Later on in her career, she had done many other movies. I've become, become very friendly with her son. And Anne Baxter from All About Eve with Betty Davis and 
the Ten Commandments. She played the queen with uh, Charlton Heston. I've become friendly with her three daughters. And Hedy Lamarr, the stunning Austrian beauty um, who invented wifey. And they found that out later on. Amazing that- thing. That's really only come out recently. That, that's really? kind of new news uh, that she was had a brain on her. Absolutely. Just the most stunning creature. And I became very friendly with her son, who unfortunately died a few years ago, and a few others. And I've met Veronica Lake's wow. daughter. I, we were friends. I met Sophia Loren's son. Um, I also was an extra in a movie with Elizabeth Taylor. My first ever, I was living in Rome for eight months in, in 1990, wrong, 1973. And I was stopped on the street and asked, do you want to be an extra in a movie with Elizabeth Taylor? And I said, are you kidding? Hang on, you were stopped on the street. Absolutely. And somebody just said, you know, come to (laughs) Fumanchino Airport tomorrow at eight o'clock. Just wear traveling clothes and bring a suitcase because you'll be shooting at the airport. And we shot at the airport for two weeks. I sat in front of her on an airplane in the airport. We didn't fly. We just pretended to fly. She was very nice um, drinking. You know, this is when she broke up with Richard Burton and she had a drinking problem. I didn't talk to her a lot, but we had a couple of little chats and she was very nice and very lovely. What were they what were they like to look at? Was she small? Was she a, I I have no concept of what these people look like in real life. Okay. Mar- Maureen O'Hara and Ingrid Bergman were tall. They were well known for being tall and it was really? new in, in their, I thought yes. Maureen O'Hara was short. Yeah. There you go. Oh. Five foot seven or five foot eight, five foot not five foot seven or five foot eight. Elizabeth Taylor is tiny was tiny. She was about five foot one in heels. She no. was a little she was like a little girl. Um <laughs> a tiny, short lady with a terrific figure and beautiful eyes and you know, gorgeous dark hair and uh, beautiful skin, but she was tiny. So for the extra work in Rome, did you get paid for that? I got paid for it. It was every day, Monday to Friday for two weeks, which I couldn't believe. That's the most I've ever done. And I've done it since then uh, here in Nice quite a few times. I was paid and got a free lunch. Nothing much. I didn't do it for the money. I do it for the experience. And its I can see myself. It's in YouTube, ma'am, even. The movie is called The Driver's Seat from a novel by Muriel Spark, who wrote uh, The Prime of Miss Jean Brody. And the movie's in YouTube, and I'm visible within the first 22 minutes in the airport, walking through the airports, and that's all. I spent two weeks. You must share that link with me, because I'll definitely uh, write that one down for everyone, because I think that would be fascinating. We do like our local stars, you know. (laughs) Absolutely. And I've, I've been doing extra work, which I don't like, for 10 years now in Nice, and occasionally they give me a small speaking part when they need an American. When they need an American of my age, um, they will come to me and uh, I, I speak. And I couldn't believe the first time I saw me on the big screen, not as an extra, but actually talking, something coming out of my mouth. <laughs> the movie was called Rock and Roll, starring Guillaume Canet and Marianne Cotillard, the very popular couple i think they've split up now but at the time they were a huge couple in films and in real life and i had three lines and um in this it was a feature film and uh he was nominated for a cesar award for best actress so it was it was great fun and what was your extra role okay a, a big part role my, my, my it was a small part it wasn't an extra an extra doesn't speak my part was an assistant film director on a set in a movie in Miami, which we shot in Cannes. Apparently, they had he had gone. Uh, Keon Kane was played himself. He played an actor playing himself. He went to Florida to shoot a movie, and I was on the set of his movie, and we shot it in the parking lot at the entrance of Cannes. So that was kind of fun, and I played the assistant director on the. So it was a movie within a movie. So you you had a you had a part in a movie. So no longer an extra. Right, you I had three. Lines. Wow. And then I did it again for Netflix for a movie called uh, Sentinelle with Olga Kirilenko, who was the actress in James Bond's uh, Quantum of Solace. And I had, a, again, I played an American. I had three lines uh, asking directions by the uh, I Love Nice sign on the promenade, just three lines in English and a few other experiences, too. So it's great fun when you get to speak. Was that through a car window? Um, uh, I think it was. No, it was- that was I think another I've seen that one. Yes, I was. Yeah, that was through a car window. And then there was another one, another movie I did, a feature film called Gloria Mundi, 
shot in Marseille where I am a Uber American tourist walking over to the actor who is the Uber driver, who is one of the stars of the movie. And I, you know, ask him to take me somewhere. So I'm always playing an American tourist or an American, obviously. Yeah. So the typecast. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and Femme de Ménage, the famous popular TV series on M6 that's been going on for years. About six years ago, they shot a prime time here in Nice for an hour and a half, rather than the usual half hour. And I played in one of the little bits. I was an American tourist ordering a meal, but I don't speak French. And the couple, the stars of this segment, don't speak English. So it was kind of funny because we kept we, we couldn't make ourselves understood. I was asking for frights. You know, frights, yeah. potatoes, <laughs> frights. And, and it was it was quite funny, and a lot of people saw that because it's a very popular show. So I'm very grateful whenever I get offered a small little bit part, but it doesn't happen often enough. <laughs> well, we will talk uh, another time more about the movies and things. But right now, I'd like to know about your French. Where did where did you start with French, please? Okay, c'est une très bonne question. I studied French in high school and college, ah. and then living. York all those years, 17 years, I used to go to the Alliance Francaise and I used to go to all the French movies. And when I traveled to Europe for my summer vacations or whatever, I would try to speak some French. And now that I've been living here for 34 years in Switzerland and France, ça marche. You know, I have no problem. <laughs> have, have, you any have you any favorite French movies, be they black and white or color? Um, yes, but mostly old movies. Um, it's funny that you should, should ask me because right now I'm having a blank, but that's a very good question. Yes, um, I'm not crazy about French cinema as a whole. I prefer British cinema, not, nothing to do with the language. Mm -hmm. I, just, uh, I just like the actors and the directors like David Lean, uh, people like that a lot better than any of the French directors. Um, of course, there were some wonderful movies with Simone Signoret and um, uh, her generation. But all of a sudden, I'm having a blank. No, that's, that's perfectly all right. But a lot of the French, uh, well, sorry, the English, uh, took their cues from stage. So Absolutely. they were used to being stage performers. There, there wasn't that sort of culture in France. I think it's as simple as that. Uh, London was always the center of uh, stage work, as was New York. So Still is. Uh, you know, that, that's why it gives birth to these things. I, I think now we this is a good time to say thank you very much, Jonathan, because I, I think I want to continue on to another interview with you if you're agreeable at a later date. And we will talk more in depth about black and white movies. How would that be? That would be wonderful. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Salut and merci beaucoup. OK, and thank you so much, Jonathan. So big smiles while I look for the off button. Okay, ciao. <laughs>